turned on. Doesn't want to prime well. Put it on choke. Doesn't want to run off choke. y'all. Hey Thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Don't go anywhere because today I brought home one of the most common handheld blowers I see come into the shop, the 125B Husqvarna, and I'm going to show you the most common issue I see with them and how to fix it all by yourself to save you time, money, and frustration in the future. But before we jump into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I will reply to all the early commenters. So to get started, let's take it outside and see how she's running. All right, it's turned on. Doesn't want to prime well. Put it on choke. Doesn't want to run off choke. So let's try it one more time. I give it throttle it dies so it definitely has some carburation issues let's tear it apart and see what's going on so not gonna lie this thing has been road hard and put up wet but it might be intimidating to a lot of people to tear into them it's okay though tear it apart i'm gonna show you how to put it back together to begin with working on any small engine, you're always going to want to check spark and compression first. Now we know this has spark because it did actually start, but I will leave a link to a spark tester in the description box below if you want to get your own, or if you have one, go ahead and use it just to make sure. When it comes to checking compression, I already checked this at work to make sure it had good compression and it did. It had about 130 pounds. If you do not have a compression tester, I'll leave one in the link box below, but it's not something that you're going to want to keep around the house if you don't have to, you know, work on stuff that often. But you can actually hold these units up in the air and if it slowly comes down, you know you still pretty much got good compression. That is while the spark plug is still in. You'll just hold it, like I'm, I'm not putting any pressure to hold it up, and it's just slowly going down. If it immediately falls down, you know that you might want to, you know, pull the muffler, check the piston cylinder, and make sure that it's not burned up. For this project, you are going to want to break out some tools. I uh, love these hemostats to get the fuel lines into the tank. I will leave a link in the description box below if you want to get some. I did see these at Harbor Freight, though, the other day, so... But if you don't want to go anywhere, I will leave a link. You'll want some needle nose just in case you need to tug real hard. If you're going to change your spark plug out, which at this point, if it's this nasty, and I'm going to show you why, you might want to go ahead and replace your plug. And you're going to want your 8 millimeter nut driver. I use Wera, if anybody wanted to know. Also, to take the blower apart, I do have to break out the 4 millimeter um, hex head. And uh, this is my Wera kit of sockets and torques and screwdrivers. It's pretty awesome. It is also in the description box below if you want to get your own. The parts that you're going to want to get, and I am actually have everything separate the way I keep it at the shop because it's just cheaper for me that way. But you can get a whole kit of an OEM carburetor, fuel line, primer bulb, purge bulb, whatever you want to call it, fuel filter, and tank grommet for $35 online. So I'm going to leave a link in the description box below where you can get all this stuff that you need. If you want to buy it separate, the part number for the carburetor is a 590-460-102. So the fuel line is 3 16 outside diameter and 3 30 seconds inside diameter. You will need a uh, push-in primer bulb, purge bulb with the two uh, nipples on it and just a regular fuel filter. So I probably work on a hundred of these handheld blowers every single year and I would promise you about 85% of them all come in with the same issue. 
let me show you. All right, so I've put my light underneath the gas tank here so we can take a look inside. And I already had checked the customer's fuel and it was perfectly fine. But look at the fuel lines. They're just broken, flopping around in there. And you, there, there's the fuel filter, not on a fuel line, just floating around. So what happens is it's, these are notorious for the fuel lines rotting and then sucking up trash into the carburetor and destroying your diaphragms inside your carburetor. They'll uh, suck trash into your screen and then you will not get any gas flow. So this is what happens to 85% of them. And I promise it's probably what happened to yours. So now I'm just gonna go in here and start pulling out some of these pieces that are floating around in here. Just lost the fuel filter. Where'd it go? There it is. And you can just dump it out. That would probably be the easiest way to go, but there we go. So we've got all the pieces out, and now we can uh, start tearing this bad boy apart. First thing we want to do is remove the air filter cover and air filter and there is two nuts holding the air filter base and carburetor onto the machine and we're going to use our eight millimeter nut driver to remove those two nuts. Next we're going to use our four millimeter hex head to remove the four bolts holding the rewind assembly on. After you've removed the rewind housing you can take off the last three one two three bolts and this whole side cover will come off. Do take notice whenever you have your bolts out. When you put them back in, make sure that the three coarse thread are the ones that go into that handle plastic and these four fine thread here, they're the ones that are going to go back into your rewind because they go into metal. All right, at this point, you can take off this whole side cover and your muffler cover will probably fall off with it. Oh, I know guys, this looks super gross and I want to clean it just as bad as you do. So let's tear some more apart and I will get this all cleaned up. All right, so once we're to this point, we are going to take our throttle trigger off because it's connected to the carburetor and we're going to take the carburetor off in just a second. Then we are going to remove the air filter base. You're going to have to turn your choke to this wider spot right here to get that air filter base off. That makes it easier. Once you're to this point, the fuel lines are just going to pop off because they're old and rotten and nasty. And we're going to take the carburetor off, but before we can do that, we're going to want to cut or pull out the lines that are still going into the tank. So we're just going to get these out. And we can remove this nasty, oh look, that line just broke off. We can just remove this nasty carburetor. So when we open up the carburetor, just so you know what it looks like inside, the diaphragms you can see have pooched out as they're starving for fuel, so they're bad anymore. The screen is completely compacted with goo. And like I said, you can put a carburetor kit in it probably, but at the same time, it's $15 and for 20 bucks more, you can have the fuel lines, fuel filter, tank grommet, and know for a hundred percent fact that it's going to run. All right. So I wanted to show you this inside the grommet. They use these little plastic connectors to put the fuel line together. The one that I took out is right here. And this was actually right at the grommet area. Now you do not need to use these to put it back in. I don't have any idea why they do. I guess it's because just to make sure that the line doesn't come in or out, but it'll work just fine and be tight enough when you put your uh, brand new lines in. So, but whenever I took it out, I did get one stuck in there. So I could either pull it out or push it through. I'm just gonna go ahead and push it through into the tank and pull it out that way because it seems to be easier. Just like that. Now, if you buy the kit that I'm putting in the description box below, I believe that the tank grommet already has the fuel lines mounted in it so you don't have to worry about this and you just push the grommet into the tank and you're good to go and you can connect all your lines. If you are using a different line though, I'm gonna show you how to put that in. Uh, I have my own way of doing it. I know a lot of people, they like to do different methods, but I put fuel lines in every single day and this is the easiest way for me to do it. I take my scissors and I cut it down the center just a smidge and then come off the side to where I make it into a point. 
sort of like that. And then I'm able to just stick it into the hole and I can feed it through usually with my fingers. But if not, if it's in a, a really tight grommet or something like that, I might make a longer slice in it and then get that through. That way I can get out my hemostats and then I can go into the gas cap hole, grab the fuel line and pull it through. That's why I love these. So the first fuel line we're gonna install is the one that goes to the fuel filter. And this is this part that my customers really get confused about because usually when the fuel lines are deteriorated like this, they don't know where they go back. And majority of the time they put them on backwards. So follow this. The choke lever is coming out the back of the blower. So if it's sitting like this, this little nipple down here at the bottom of the carburetor closest to the choke lever, that's the one that the fuel filter is going to go to. So we know, since it's only about this far away from the tank, we need that much line to be outside of the tank, and then we need it to lay in the bottom. We need the end of it to be connected to the fuel filter and lay in the bottom of the tank. So we're going to end up cutting off that little sliver that I made. So we know about that much is gonna be outside the tank, about that much is gonna be laying inside the tank. So I'm gonna cut it about right here. I would say give it a good, six inches. Now I'm going to put this end in through my grommet and I'm gonna pull it out of my gas cap hole. I'm gonna remove the part that I slivered sideways and then I'm gonna attach my fuel filter. All right, so it doesn't matter really which hole you choose on this one. I'm just gonna push it on through. And this one actually, it's, it's going pretty easy since it is a used grommet, but it's still got plenty of resistance to where it's not gonna slide through. If you feel a but, you know, where it has no resistance and it's just sliding back and forth, you're gonna have to change your grommet out too. But thankfully that kit has it in there already. So I'm pushing it all the way down through. And then I'm going to grab my hemostats and I'm going to pull the end out. I'm gonna cut off that little end that I cut sideways. And I'm gonna attach my fuel filter. going to take it back down and lay it in the bottom of the tank and make sure that your line wasn't so long that it flips back up a lot of times I see that if a customer puts too much line in there it the fuel filter will be facing up towards the gas cap and once you get halfway down it's not in the fuel anymore and it shuts off so watch out for that one the next line that we're putting in the grommet is the return to the tank so it actually draws fuel from your fuel filter through your fuel line into your carburetor, then it sucks it through a line back into your primer purge bulb, and then from the primer purge bulb, it goes back into the tank. So this line is gonna go from the purge bowl to the tank. So once again, I'm gonna cut it slightly at a curve. I'm gonna stick it on in, and I'm just barely putting it in there, probably just a half inch or so, because that's just a return line, and it does not need to be down into the fuel tank any more than that. Now this line is only going from the fuel tank to the back of the air filter base and to the purge bulb. So you just wanna make sure that you have it long enough to go around the side of the carburetor and to the back of the primer bulb. So about five inches sticking out is what you're gonna want. At this point, we can go ahead and put our brand new carburetor on. You're gonna to wanna to put the carburetor mounting gasket on. Um, most of them will come with a hole on each side. If your, yours only has a hole on one side, you'll wanna make sure that that hole is towards this direction because it needs to go over this channel right here. Just like that. And we will put our carburetor on. And we're going to hook this small short line to the bottom of the carburetor. And you'll hook it up just like that. 
towards the back end of the carburetor going towards the cylinder. You have one more fuel nipple. This is going to be your fuel line that you're going to connect from here to the primer bulb. And then I will show you how to connect it on each one of the nipples because one is a suck and one is a blow and it has to be on the correct way. Your new carburetor will also come with the air filter base mounting gasket. You'll want to put that on. Next, we're going to reattach our throttle lever and trigger. If it did come apart, the part with the hook on the end, one has a Z-bend and one has a hook. The hook goes into the trigger itself. So we're just going to put that like that. And the rod part of it goes towards the outside. Now you're going to want to work this Z-bend into your carburetor, just like that. Put your trigger back on. And next we can do our air filter base. All right, so we have our two lines that are gonna to go to our air filter base. The one that goes to the tank is our return line, and the one coming from the carburetor is to purge it, prime it through the carburetor. So when we look at the back of the base here, you can see that the purge bulb has two nipples on it. One is long and one is short. Always remember, short sucks, long blows. So we suck the fuel through the carburetor. So the short one will be connected to the line coming from our carburetor. And since the long one blows back into the tank, we're going to connect the line going back into our tank to the long nipple on top. All right, so I've got my lines attached. I've got my choke lever going through the bottom of the air filter base coming out this little uh, slide right here. And we can go ahead and put it back on, but as we do, we want to make sure to not pinch this line right here because it happens quite frequently. All right, I think we're all buttoned up and we're able to put our nuts back on. Before we put our side panels on, next thing you want to do is prime it and make sure that everything is going through good. And if it is, you're ready to put it back together and see if she runs. When putting it back together, the easiest way I find to do it, put your muffler cover back on like this. That way it'll stay in its place as you're putting this side cover back on. And if you have an issue, if with it all going together, except right up here, it feels like it's got some resistance, turn this, uh, throttle lock and you can usually figure out, there you go, it'll uh, go go back together a lot better if you move your throttle lock to a certain position. So, And you're going to put the three coarse screws back in the handle. One, two, three. Then we can reattach our rewind. Sometimes if you go to put it on and it's having an issue, pull the pull rope and then that will all line up. All right, she's all put back together. Let's take her outside and see how she runs. All right. We already primed it, so we're choking it. Popped off. Take it off, choke. she's purring like a brand new blower. So hopefully this video saved you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find us at Chicanic.com where you can get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts, or find us on Instagram at The Real Chicanic. Thanks, and have a great day.